Hey there internets, I'm Michael and this is Two Can Play That Game, bringing you yet another instalment of Game Night in Review. In fact, this is our big 10th instalment. So hopefully you have enjoyed the other nine instalments of Games Night in Review, and if not, please go check them out. So the games I played at Games Light last night was Camel Up, as a little filler, and then the night was actually arranged to play Arcadia Quest. So those are the games that are going to be featured in this episode. Um, the usual caveats that Games Night is just about games I haven't played much is not going to apply because both of these games I have played loads. But with that out of the way, let's look at the first game, which is Camel Up. So here we go, Camel Up. Now, for those that don't know what Camel Up is, this is a fun little game about betting on camel racing. And it works really nicely for pretty much all the players that it recommends. Um, I will be doing a full series of videos on this, uh, potentially in the next few days I might do this one because it's, it is a really fun game and it's a quick light game, so I should be able to do them reasonably quick for you and you can see a bit more detail on this. Um, the, one of the good things about this game is you have these wooden camels and the reason it's called Camel Up is because they stack up like so, which can be really quite nice and fun to do. Um, so last night, as I say, this was kind of being used as a filler game just while we were waiting for people to arrive to play the main game, which was Arcadia Quest. Um, it hadn't been planned to be played, it was just what was chosen of the available options while we were waiting. It's a really quick game. It can play sort of 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the number of players. It can go a bit higher if using full player count. But um, no, I really enjoy it, and I will talk more on, it, on that when I do my full review. Um, last night, I think we played, in the end, two or three um, goes of this, and I did really bad on a couple, and I, lo I won one. I, I did really well on, I think it was the final game. So, that was good fun. Everyone enjoyed it, and everyone had played it before. So, nice little filler game that we played last night. Then, on to the main event, which is, of course... Arcadia Quest. Now, I really love Arcadia Quest. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's kind of an arena battle game with a bit of a dungeon crawly feel that I really like. Um, so the way you'll start the game is first you need to pick your guild, which is made up of three heroes. So what we did last night is we did drafting to do that. And then once you've got your guild, you work through six different scenarios and there's more than six to choose from. So there is a bit of replay value in that, in which scenarios you end up doing to make up those six. However, the final scenario is always the same one. And the nature of the game is that you are all members of these guilds trying to buy against each other to be the ones to save Arcadia from Lord Fang, who is this evil vampire that's taken it over. And if you do so, you'll gain rewards from the king, basically. You get to be the big best guild typeness. So that's the nature of the game. And you're working through these individual scenarios of six that make up the campaign until you finally face Lord Fang and defeat him. So last night was the first scenario that we went through and two of the people playing had not played Arcadia Quest before and it's, it's an interesting one to explain to new players because there's a lot to explain but it's actually quite simple to understand and grasp. So there's a lot of things you're going through but especially for gamers they'll just pick it up really easily. So I think in the end, I think the explanation only took like 15, 20 minutes of, yep, yeah, so your move, this is how movement works. You'll attack, this is how attack works. 
And then there were a few little minor things that just got addressed as they came up during the gameplay. Um, obviously, one of the things with this being scenario based, it has these modular boards. So there is a lot of setup time for this in that you've got to set up each scenario's map and then you've got to put these lovely cool mini or not miniatures out on the map. Obviously, these are actually the heroes, not the monsters that you'd have out. But you're, you'll be navigating around this scenario and within that you'll be attacking and fighting with the other guilds. But there are also monsters there um, and the monsters are basically just money bags type thing that you're beating until they pop a coin out. Um, there's a bit of AI there and I say AI, it's AI in regards to you know what will trigger them to respond but then how they respond is controlled by the player to your right so that does make it a bit more than just simple AI. But as I say the, the miniatures you get in this game being a cool mini or not game, they are really nice. Now, unfortunately, I only have the base game for this. I didn't back the Kickstarter. I found out about the game while just towards the end of the Kickstarter going on, and I hadn't backed a Kickstarter before at that point, and I was a bit, oh, I'm, I'm unsure what to do. I'll just wait for it to come out in stores. Cue like a year or more later when it finally came to the UK and I got to play it and I just loved it. I'd been looking forward to it for so long and it really did meet my expectations. So that was great. But anyway, um, getting back on with last night, because obviously I will do a full video series on this at some point. I just don't know when yet. Maybe I'll do it next week. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a big game to do, but... I do love it as a game, so it is definitely one I will be doing at some point. So last night we started off with doing our drafting of our guilds and I must say it uh, didn't go great for me. So I ended up as the blue player and my guild was called Mage Blast and in my guild I ended up with Seth, Maya and Chaz. And this was a bit frustrating because I drafted Seth and then I drafted Chaz and that's fine, fine. I've got a melee and I've got a magic user and then I was given Maya and it was like, oh, I've got the two magic users in the game. It's like, you, you kind of don't want that because then they want to have the same equipment. That was the draft for me. It didn't go great. It could have gone better. Um, and it was just unfortunate, but uh, it's, it's not my best of guilds, but it it's... It, it did the job last night, let's say that for now. So the other guilds that I was facing off against were the Blondie Rangers, and this was the green gill made up of Johan, Greensleeves and Darren, which I think is a really good strong combination to have ended up with. Um, and that's what one of the new players ended up with. But unfortunately, this is a very luck heavy game and they didn't have a very lucky night, which is a shame given it was their first time playing. Uh, next up we had For Fox Sake, which is the Red Guild and made up of Spike, Diva and Kanga. Not too sure about that as a combination personally. They, they definitely didn't have a good game either, but I'll talk more, as I say, in a short while. And then the final guild we had was of course the Orange Guild and that was Fiery Death Gang which I think is just because orange is kind of like the colour of fire I, I don't know where that name came from but anyway uh, that was Grom, Scarlet and Wisp now Wisp is my favourite character in Arcadia Quest I just love him so uh, my wife actually drafted him in part just to stop me getting him which was quite annoying but anyway yeah I, I think Grom and Wisp definitely a strong combination Scarlet I'm not overly keen on Scarlet but she's definitely not a bad one to have so those were the guilds and the game started off with the fiery death gang coming out the gate strong they came straight out and we were playing the district of hammers um, scenario 
which I think is the easiest of the scenarios, even of the two easy ones. So that's why I chose that, because I felt it would be the best introduction for new players. And as I say, Fiery Death had a really strong start. They opened their door, they killed an orc, and that was their turn. Then it went to me, and I opened the door, I attacked an orc, and it went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, so that was a bit of a bad start. Well, I say horribly wrong, it could have gone worse. Basically, I tried to attack the orc. I don't think I damaged it at all. It then charged me and did me like four damage. So I was barely alive. <laughs> so that was really not a good start. Um, then it was the Blondie Rangers and they had a similar turn to me. They opened the door, they attacked, failed to kill it, but they didn't take quite as much damage as me. And then it was finally for Fox sake. And they, this was one of the new guys and they had a really bold plan. Because they had Spike, their plan was just to try and run past the Orc and have the Orc kill itself because of Spike's defense dice. And they'd given Spike parrying blade, so they'd been really smart about this. They had upped his, Spike's defense knowing that defense was a weapon for Spike. And they got really unlucky on their rolls. So the, the orc attacked and it was actually his wife rolling for him. And uh, it was like crit, crit, crit. And it was, so it was just really unlucky. Spike got destroyed in the first attack at trying to move. So the guy never really even had an action practically. And so that was a really bad start for him. and. I don't think he ever really recovered from that for the rest of the game. It was just such a setback in that first turn, just having a hero die instantly like that, having not achieved anything. But then from there, um, what happened is that the Fiery Death Gang kind of made a big lead. They were getting off the kills, so they were getting towards that quest. They'd managed two kills, so they got another kill that next turn, and then they managed to get the um, weapon reward from that scenario. So they were having a really good strong start. I was still a bit teetering. Um, and as I say, both the new people were very much teetering. You know, me and the Blondie Rangers in our next turns, I think managed to finally get rid of our orcs that were our entrances. Um, but I think we both lost heroes in doing that. And then as well as the Fiery Death Gang being in the lead at this point on the number of kills of monsters and also having got another quest, um, they then nearly killed one of my heroes and that would have got them another quest. So then on my turn, I committed suicide with Chaz. I had him run into a room with an orc in, knowing that the orc would then attack me because A, that would have taken me out of line of sight of the fiery death gang. So, and keep in mind, Chaz was really wounded at this point. One more wound and he would have died. Um, so A, at the very least, it takes him out of sight of them. So it makes it harder for them to get that kill and complete that quest. Two, it may well have killed him, which it did in the end. And so he committed suicide because he would rather have died by orc than died by fiery death gang. So that's the sort of great fun that you can have with Arcadia Quest. Um, and from there, it actually really turned around for me. Obviously, Chaz was bad luck for me. And when Chaz died, suddenly the game shifted. I was just rolling what I needed and killing monsters. And I was able to run in and grab one of the um, treasures that was left, the um, rewards. So yeah, I in the end, I did win the scenario, which was great. I got three quests, um, Fiery Death Gang had two quests, and unfortunately the two new players completed zero quests. And I was talking to my wife about this uh, um, yesterday after playing, and it was very much, we were like, we felt kind of guilty because we'd both played before, and we were like, well, should we have done something different so that they had more of a better game experience? But in the end, it, was, it, it wasn't that they were making bad decisions or anything. It's not, it didn't come down to the strategy of what was going on. It was just the dice rolls. And it can go that way in this game, unfortunately. But they still seem to have fun, so that was good. Um, so yeah, the, the winner was me. Um, we were all pretty even on deaths, except for the Fiery Death Gang, who had two deaths. The rest of us only had one. And 
I had the most coins, I think potentially by quite a lot, because I had 10 coins. So that was quite good. Um, and then obviously I got a reward and so did the Fiery Death Gang. So I, uh, I can't remember what it was called. It's some hammer, um, which helps you kill other heroes. So I've already kind of picked what the next game is going to be. And that's going to be the Moon Gate. And I picked that because it's one where you're all starting quite close together. And my plan for that scenario, when we next play that, is to go get off on, out with Seth straight away, going, die, die, die. I've loaded him up with magic. In this first scenario, I took Seth, but largely because I didn't want anyone else to. But I didn't actually use him. I was very... I purposely was trying to be a bit nice with that because Seth is a nasty character. He's there to kill heroes, that's it. And so I purposely didn't use him in this first scenario. I kind of just left him in the entrance. I didn't give him any items because I've kind of got to choose between using Maya or using Seth at this point because I don't really have enough magic to effectively use both. And so I chose to go for Maya and go for being able to go without resting for longer and go for the monster kills this scenario and be nicer to the other players. But next scenario, I'm going out with Seth and I'm going for blood. But anyway, so that was our Kadia quest last night. Um, I do hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do check out the other videos on the channel. And of course, if you want to see more on my Arcadia quest campaign as that progresses, please do subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any videos. And you can also find us on social media. We are on Facebook and also on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.